Hello, mighty companions. This is Earl Raj Purdy, back to do another Course in Miracles lesson with you today. And uh, today's Course in Miracles lesson is lesson, two, lesson 240, lesson 240, lesson 240, one of my favorites. Fear is not justified in any form. What? Fear is not justified in any form. There's no justification for feeling afraid in any form or any appearance. There's no reason to be afraid no matter what things look like. It's basically what it's saying. Fear is not justified in any form. Lesson 240. Fear is deception. Fear is deception. Fear is deception. Fear is deception. So when you are feeling fear, you could say, I'm feeling deceived right now. I'm feeling deception right now. I'm feeling afraid of this person. I am feeling deception about this person. I am being deceived about this person. Fear attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be. Fear attests that you're looking at yourself in a way you could never really be. And therefore, Fear means that you are looking upon a world which is impossible. When you are afraid, you're looking at an impossible world. When you are afraid, you're looking at an impossible world. Not one thing in this world is true. 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 And the Course of Miracles defines the world as the false perception of separation. So there is nothing in the false perception of separation that is true. It doesn't matter what the form in which Anything in this world may appear. It is not true. It is not everlasting. It is not eternal. So everything in this world witnesses but to your own illusions of yourself. Everything in this world just witnesses to your false ideas of yourself. Everything in this world just witnesses to the false idea that you are just a separate being or just a body. So let's not be deceived today. Let's not be deceived today. Let's, let's not be fooled today. Let's not be fooled today. Let's not be fooled today. Let's not be deceived today. We are the sons of God. Sons has nothing to, nothing to do with masculine. Son in the Course in Miracles language means the creations of God. And God is love. So we are the creations of love. We are the sons of God. We are the creations of love. We are the sons of God means we are the creations of love. There is no fear in us. 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 There is no fear in you. There is no fear really in you. I mean the real you. There is no fear in the real you. There is no fear in us for we are each a part of love itself. We are each a part of love itself. There is no fear in us because we are, we are love. There is no fear in us because we are love. And of course the miracles teaches that fear is the opposite of love. 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 How foolish are our fears? How foolish are our fears? Would you allow your son to suffer? Would you allow your child 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 to suffer? How foolish are our fears? 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 Would you allow your son to suffer? God, would you allow your creation to suffer? Would you allow me to suffer? Would God allow you to suffer? Give us faith today to recognize your son. Give us faith today to recognize your son. In other words, give us the faith to recognize your creation today, love. And let's set your creation free. We're going to have the faith to recognize God's creation and we're going to have the faith to set God's creation free. Let us forgive him in your name. Let us forgive all of God's creation in your name, God that we may understand everyone's holiness, so that we can understand everyone's holiness. And the Course in Miracles teaches that holiness is sinlessness, that holiness is innocence. So, so this is really saying, let us forgive our brother or sister in your name, God, that we may understand their innocence, their holiness, and feel the love for him, feel the love for God's creation, which is your own love as well. 
fear is not justified in any form. And the theme for review that we're going to cover for the last time is what is salvation? 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 You know, whenever I hear the term salvation, it sometimes brings up my old uh, religious upbringing that I have some fear around because I was taught to have a very fearful perception of God and a fearful perception of salvation. So it's good for me to hear that word and lose any charge that I may have on that word by using the Course in Miracles definitions of what these words mean. So what is the Course in Miracles definition of the word salvation? Well, it says that salvation is a promise. So salvation is a promise made by God. And the promise that God makes is that you're going to find your way to God at last, which is the same as saying you're going to find your way to your creator at last, which is the same as saying you're going to find your way to love, which is our creator at last. Now, this promise cannot be cannot but be kept. The Course says this promise that you're going to find your way back to God and love cannot but be kept. Salvation, which is the promise of God that you are going to connect with God, guarantees that time will have an end. There will be an end of things that come and go, things that don't last. And it guarantees that time will have an end. And it also, the promise of God, also guarantees that all the thoughts that have been born in time will end as well. God's word, which is the same as saying the truth, is given every mind which thinks it has separate thoughts. So even though you think you have a lot of different thoughts, you still have the truth in your mind. And the truth in your mind, God's word, will replace these thoughts of separation, which are thoughts of conflict, with thoughts of peace. So the, the truth of God is in your mind, even though you may have other thoughts that, that make you feel separate or make you think you're separate or afraid. And, and all those thoughts of conflict that you may be experiencing are going to be replaced with thoughts of peace, which the Course defines as total fulfillment. So your conflict is going to be replaced with total fulfillment. Do you know that the thought of peace was given to you, God's son, the instant that your mind had thought of war? So as soon as you thought of something that gave you conflict, you were given the thought of peace. There was no need for such a thought of peace before you got into conflict and separation. Because before we entered separation, peace was given without opposite and peace just merely existed. But when the mind is split, when the mind is split, that means when the mind is in need of healing, when the man is split, there is a need of healing. So the thought of God that has the power to heal the split, the conflict, became a part of every fragment of your mind, which still was one, but failed to recognize its oneness. Now, since you don't recognize your oneness, he says, then, then your mind doesn't know itself. And, and it means that your mind thought its own identity was lost. So salvation... Salvation is undoing in the sense that salvation doesn't do anything. The promise made by God doesn't do anything. It just fails. i say it again. The promise of God, salvation doesn't do anything. It just fails to support the world of dreams and malice. So the truth just doesn't support any more fear, any more conflict, any more malice. Thus, the salvation, which is the promise made by God that you're going to find your way to the truth and peace and love at last, Salvation lets illusions, which are false ideas, go. By not supporting illusions, which are false ideas, then salvation merely lets false ideas quietly go down to dust. And what the false ideas hid, what the fear hid, is now revealed. The love, which is an altar to the holy name of God, whereon God's word or truth is written with the gifts of your forgiveness laid before it. And the Course in Miracles defines forgiveness as a corrected perception. So with the gifts of your corrected perception laid before the altar, and if your perception is corrected, it says in the very next sentence, then the memory of God, not far behind, the memory of love is not far behind when you've forgiven, which means you have had, you have had your perception corrected. <clears throat> so that also tells us that um, we're going to come daily. It's just, let us come daily to the holy place, which is, of course, defines a holy place as a healing place, an innocent place. So let us come daily to this innocent healing place. Let's spend a while together. Let's spend a while together. Here we share our final dream, our final false idea, which is that we need to be forgiven, which is, that's really ultimately an illusion, too, because we love unconditionally, but we forgive until we realize there is nothing to forgive, which is our final dream. 
our final dream is a dream, and then it tells us what the, everything is going to look like when we actually have forgiven, when we've actually correctly perceived ourselves. Then we're going to see what it looks like. It says, uh, here we share our final dream. It's a dream in which there is no sorrow because this dream, this perception, this world that you're going to live in, it holds a hint of all the glory given us by God. Do you know the grass is pushing through the soil? Do you know the trees are budding now? Do you know the birds? Do you know that birds have come to live within these branches and within the trees branches? Earth is being born again. Earth is being born again. What does that mean to have earth born again? It means that your world is being born again in a new perspective. Night has gone and we have come together in the light. We have come together in the light. For here, for here, when we have come together in the truth, when we have come together in the light, and here we give salvation to the world, and here we give the promise to the world. For it is here, salvation, which is the promise made by God that we would find our way to God at last. That promise was received. The song of our rejoicing is the call to all the world. That freedom is returned, freedom is returned, the time is almost over, and you, me, God's son, has but an instant more to wait until his father is remembered, dreams are gone and done, eternity has shined away the world, and only heaven, which the course defines as reality, now exists at all. So let's, let's chant and affirm our lesson for today, which is fear is not justified in any form. Fear is not justified. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is not justified in any form. Say what now? Fear is not justified in any form. Say it. Fear is not justified in any form. In any fear is not justified in any form. 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 Fear is not justified. Now, what does that mean? There's no reason to be afraid in any form or appearance. There's no reason to feel afraid. God is with you. So there's no reason to be afraid in any form. There's no reason to be afraid. There is no reason to be afraid. I know you may be feeling some fears about some things and tell yourself fear is not justified in any form. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is not justified in any form. What? Fear is not justified in any form. This is Earl Raj Purdy. I want to thank you for listening to this lesson. Check me out at www dot earlpurdy dot com. You can watch classes and videos of me sharing the course in miracles. Ah, uh, let peace, let peace extend from my mind and my heart to yours.